Today's asbestos artifact is an asbestos-lined safe. Now, why would you want asbestos in your safe? Let's take a look. I'm asbestos attorney Justinian Lane, and this is Asbestos Artifacts, where we take a look at some old asbestos products and dig a little bit into the story behind them. Today's asbestos artifact is an asbestos-lined safe. A safe is for keeping valuables for important documents. Why would you want asbestos in one? Well, to answer that, we should talk a bit about asbestos. Asbestos is a group of silicate minerals with some amazing qualities. Asbestos is fibrous, it can be pulled apart like string and even woven into fabrics. Asbestos is also highly resistant to heat and flame. The ancient Greeks who named asbestos used its fibers to make oil lamp filaments which would never be burned up by the flame. In fact, some of the earliest recorded uses of asbestos were due to its fireproof nature. The ancient Romans used asbestos to make wicks for sacred lanterns and also as cremation shrouds for people of great importance. So we've known for thousands of years that asbestos was fireproof. That's why during the 20th century, asbestos linings were used in many safes like this one. The linings were thought to make the safe more resistant to heat and flame and able to protect the contents of the safe from being burned or harmed in case of a fire. The first safes in the United States were imported from France during the 1820s. Safes used to be called iron chests, and they were pretty popular with merchants and bankers in the 1800s. Many of these, like those in banks, were just large iron blocks. Another popular safe design was an iron and wood safe called a hobnail safe. Most of them were essentially thick wooden boxes banded and reinforced together with iron bars and straps fastened to the safe's wooden walls with large flat-headed nails, hence the name hobnail safe. Some had sheets of iron lining the inside, but while they prevented people from stealing the contents, they weren't fireproof. After all, they were still made of wood. Now the wood had been soaked in salt water to make it much more heat resistant, but the wood could still burn if it came into direct contact with flames. Later models used coatings of gypsum or plaster of Paris to make them more fire resistant. But in the 1830s, a guy named Jesse Delano, who was making plaster of Paris iron chests, patented a new model that added clay and lime and some other materials that made it even more fireproof. In 1835, there was a major fire in New York, and many of the old safes, the iron chests and hobnail safes, utterly failed to protect their contents. In fact, Scientific American magazine wrote that the fire of 1835 in New York had proved that the old-fashioned safe was perfectly worthless. This design was significantly improved upon by Charles J. Gaylor, who added an asbestos lining. Gaylor liked asbestos, and he patented a number of uses to coat other products with asbestos and protect them. There was a large fire in Thomaston, Maine, and one of Gaylor's asbestos-lined safes was in a burned building, and it had protected its contents pretty well. A bystander dubbed it a salamander, because legend has it that salamanders are resistant to fire. In fact, medieval alchemists thought asbestos was actually salamander hair, and the first asbestos insulators used the salamander symbol for their union. We talk more about that in Asbestos 101 and our Asbestos Rewind series on history if you want to check those out on our YouTube channel. The fact that the asbestos safe protected its contents in an actual fire was a big selling point, and they became very popular. Not long after, John Scott patented a different asbestos-lined safe using plaster of Paris and clay. Scott's asbestos safe coated the wooden walls like Jesse Delano had, but Scott mixed asbestos into other materials like plaster of Paris to make it even more fireproof. Now this particular safe was the sort of thing that was probably sold in Montgomery Wards or Kmart or stores like that of the time. You can see right here on the label it says asbestos insulation and the person who sold it was apparently a Steelers fan. If you open it up, it's just a steel lined box, but there's walls of two layers of steel and in between the steel will be asbestos. You don't want to disturb that asbestos or it could come out and get airborne. These boxes were very commonly sold to a lot of households and many of them are still out there. I know it's always fun if you find a locked safe to try to bust it open and see what's inside, but take due care if it's an older unit like this that could have asbestos in it. Asbestos safes remained popular for decades. Some mixed asbestos into materials for coating. Later models used asbestos boards or an asbestos fabric to line the inside. Safes with asbestos fabric or paper or boards tend to be the more dangerous type of asbestos safes, and I can't recommend that anybody use one. Unfortunately, both the durability and fibrous nature of asbestos make it extremely dangerous to humans. The asbestos used in fabrics and linings is known as friable asbestos, which means it can break up into fibers and particles that you could breathe. 
The asbestos lining on the safe can break down, especially over time, releasing asbestos fibers into the air. These can be inhaled or swallowed, causing health problems many years later. It can be difficult to know if an old safe has asbestos in it. Asbestos was mixed with other materials like concrete or John Scott's plaster of Paris. Now, if the asbestos stays inside that material, it's potentially safe to use. But if it wears away or starts cracking or crumbling, asbestos fibers can become airborne and breathed by anybody coming into contact with the safe. It is especially important not to scrape or gouge an asbestos lined safe because that will release the fibers. If for some reason you do need to do that, proper protective equipment should be worn, including goggles, mask, and respiratory protection. I'm Justinian Lane, and this has been Asbestos Artifacts. See you next time. Mm -hmm.